Hey there, this is Heather with TwoBlooms.com and in this Lightroom tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to enhance Christmas tree photos um, just by using the ambient light of the Christmas tree. Now this isn't a tutorial to say which type of lighting you should use or whatnot. This is mainly if you want to get some quick snaps of your kids around the tree, um, more documentary style. I'm not here to say that this is the best way to light your Christmas tree photos, but in the moment it serves its purpose and I want to show you a few ways to take them up a notch and to really um, enhance them. So we're going to be finished um, with this finished result. So I'm going to show you how to get from here to here using just a few things right here in Lightroom. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do um, I'll have you note that my ISO is set at 2000, so we are going to have some visible grain. My camera can handle high ISO, but um, it's still pretty grainy if you take a look at that. So anyways, um, embrace the grain. Don't worry about it too much. We can try to reduce it a little bit, but that's kind of the uh, whole feel of the image. So what I'm going to do first is just quickly apply a preset. Um, I'm going to click Dance Party for my Color Crazy set. You can apply any kind of preset that you want or any of your personal editing style um, and whatnot. So I'm going to just kind of mess with these settings a little bit. I don't want it too vibrant and too many whites. But once I applied that preset, you can see how it really warmed up the image, created a lot of the contrast. So this is a good starting point for the photo. Now I want the focus of this photo to be mostly on him, his face looking at the tree. So I'm going to be blocking out this whole curtain area um, because it's kind of distracting and it takes away from the whole mood of the image. So I'm going to grab my graduated filter. I'm going to make sure that I click on burn. Now this is a filter that automatically comes with Lightroom. So you should have it yourself. So I'm going to click on my pointer, my little marker here, and just drag it halfway through the image. Now this didn't do too much with the basic um, exposure setting, so I'm actually going to just decrease it. I'm going to drag it all the way down, to be honest with you, um, because I really want that blackness here. And I can still see part of the curtain here, but we can go back and touch that up too. Now once we did that, we also had the vignette come out towards his face. So I'm going to come over here to the brush tool. We're still underneath the graduated filter. I'm going to hit brush. And we're going to come down to the brush settings and we're going to click on erase. Now this will help you erase any part of the filter that you just applied. So the flow is how much of the brush you want to um, show through. So kind of think of it as opacity. 100% flow is 100% opacity. Zero is zero. Actually you can't even click zero. So a lot of questions I get about brushes. My brushes aren't working. Um, this applies for the normal brushes too and it's mostly because the flow was set all the way down. So make sure that you um, take note of that too. Feathering is just how much it's feathered. You see how I can feather um, it gets more shallow. This will be a more defined edge. So definitely um, add some feathering if you're working with faces and whatnot. So I'm just going to go over his face a little bit. Maybe decrease that flow. Actually, undo that. I'm going to have flow about 75 and just go over his face and part of his hair maybe even the shirt. But I mostly just want to keep the shadows over here. Shadows on this side of his face are perfectly fine in my book. Um, it just creates dimension and contrast and it doesn't look over the top and fake, so to speak. So uh, that looks pretty good. I am going to polish this up over here to kind of remove any more of the distracting curtain. So I'm going to click on done. And I'm going to come up here to my brush 
and click on burn. Burn's already selected and this brush looks pretty good. I'll probably, yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm just gonna go over parts of the curtain that haven't been blacked out and then just kind of go all the way to the edge just so they're nice and um, smoothed over. So that looks pretty good. I can still see some here, but I don't wanna get it too crazy. I'll just go over a tiny little bit and there we go. So I'm gonna click on new again. And what I wanna do is just add a little bit more brightness to this his face area. So I'm gonna just click on dodge and just kind of go over his face with the wall. So it's kind of blended in a little bit and it's not just his face where it's gonna really stand out like a sore thumb. Okay, and let's do one more. <laughs> Keep changing my mind on you. I'm gonna click new. So for each brush setting that you wanna apply, make sure you always click new. Otherwise, you're going to hit a new brush and, or you'll come over here, you'll click a new brush and then the brush setting that you just applied will be applied to the spot that you just brushed over. So always click new when you wanna work with a new brush. I'm gonna click burn again, and I'm just gonna burn the edges of the tree just a little bit, just to give it some depth and contrast. Okay, so I'm gonna click on done, and I believe that should do it. Now we will touch on noise a little bit, so I'm gonna come down to the, my detail panel and you can see I've already sharpened this image. Um, I apply sharpening on import, so that's already been taken care of. And with the noise, it doesn't really bother me, but you could come over here and just kind of smooth it out a little bit. If you add too much noise reduction, you can see how it gets all blurry. It almost looks like a painting. So I do not recommend using noise reduction at its highest setting. And then you can kind of see like these um, flecks on his face once you apply too much. Then it becomes more prominent and kind of icky. So I'm just going to do a little bit just to kind of smooth out some of the grain. And that way it looks a little bit more polished. So there you have it. Um, we took the image, the straight out of camera, just added a few things to really make this pop and set the focus on the little boy in the tree. So I hope you found this tutorial useful and you can apply these editing steps to your editing process. And make sure you check out my website, twoblooms.com, for more editing tutorials and um, my very own Lightroom Lush Advanced Editing course. I will leave a link below to that, but we go over many similar ways to enhance photos that don't always look great from the beginning, but you can really make them look great in the end. So anyways, thanks again for tuning in and I hope to see you next time. Bye.